Mixing flesh tones for your painting is very similar to how you mix colors for any other part of your painting. Um, the only difference is that you are going to be more picky if you don't have the color quite right because then it looks kind of unnatural versus like the green in your grass being a little too dark or too light or too yellow or too brown. You're not going to notice as much. But if my hand is a little bit too dark, too light, too orange, like I'm going to notice. Okay. So that's the big difference. So um, I'm actually going to try to match the color that I have in my actual hand. Um, keep in mind that depending on your reference image, your hand might be more yellow, more brown, more uh, orange, uh, have some more pink in it. Mine's a little bit more like pinky orange kind of in it. Okay, it really depends on your reference image that you're making. Okay, just as when we're mixing any other colors, always test before you do it on your final. Always mix off of the paper. So those are some of the big things. So um, I'm going to get a base of water because I'm working with a fairly light color so I want to get a good hunk of water so I'm going to put some in the lid of my paint palette keep in mind if you're trying to mix a brand new color you don't want anything getting all tainted um, I recommend cleaning out the lid so I'm going to start with some yellow okay my hand is far from yellow but there's some paleness to it that might require some yellow. Let's get some get some orange in there. So it's a lot of just trial and error and mixing things up and keeping track of what colors you are using to create the color. Okay, like that's obviously not the color in my hand. Okay. And also keep in mind that watercolors dry lighter than they do when you have them mixed. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. And I think I need a more red to get that kind of pink in my hand. Going to add some brown to it. Um, nine times out of ten, you're going to need some amount of brown in the color that you mix for a flesh tone. Uh, no matter how pale it is, it usually is a super, super pale brown with some other colors that are kind of mixed in there. Okay, I'm actually going to add some more brown to mine. So it doesn't look much like the color of my hand. I'm going to grab my scrap paper so I can test it. Okay, see how that's getting pretty close okay, to the actual color of my hand. Um, the difference between trying to get the lighter and darker shades in your um, flesh tones is to have multiple of these mixed. So I have one, this one that's kind of really light. So if I spread this out, see how light that is? Okay, it's a pretty light one. Now if I wanted to make it darker, I might want to steal some of my same color, transport it to another section, and then maybe I add a little bit of brown, a little bit of purple, depending on what your shadows kind of look like in your actual image or in your real reference that you're using. So getting some darker values. And you'll probably do that a couple times. So when you're doing your flesh tones, you'll probably have each of these pans separate between, you know, regular, uh, darker, darker. Maybe you have some lighter ones that you mix together. Um, adding uh, purple. Um, don't be afraid to add purple when it comes to like a shadow because it does not ruin your color. Sometimes it creates the perfect kind of like darkness. See how that kind of matches the shadow on my thumb? It's a little bit purpley. Okay, so keep that kind of stuff in mind while you're working. I actually might want a little bit of purple in my real color as well because I think that matches just a little bit. Okay, see how that color kind of matches a little bit more just with that little bit of purple? Purple is really good at adding shadows and that kind of stuff. So a lot of it's trial and error. See, I'm going on my scrap piece of paper first. You can use the, you know, paper from your sketchbook scraps that you have lying around, recipe cards, note cards, whatever is handy, okay, um, and make sure that you test it before you actually physically put it on your paper. So that's my tips and tricks on how to do your flesh tones.